Hi Kipsters, today we are going to talk about subtracting fractions, decimals, and mixed numbers. So I have a couple of facts that I want to present to you first before we actually get into the solving of it. Fact, we have to add or subtract numbers and the only way that we can do that is if they're on the same number line. That's if they have the same units and the same denominator. If they have the same denominator or the same units, they're on the same number line and we can actually add or subtract them. We know that a fraction is a point on the number line. So if we want to add or subtract fractions, they need to be in the same sequence or the same units. In other words, they have to have the same denominator. All right, we can use the equivalent fractions theorem and the FFFP, the fundamental fact of fraction pairs, to add or subtract fractions. Remember, we added fractions, we use the FFFP. And that simply states, the fundamental fact of fraction pairs says, that given a fraction, that's A over B, and another fraction, C over D, where B does not equal D, in other words, the denominators are not the same, you can represent both fractions with the same denominator with taking the first fraction and multiplying both the numerator and denominator of that fraction by the other fraction's denominator. And that's what I've done right here. I've taken the fraction and multiplied it by the other fraction's denominator, numerator and denominator parts. And you take the other fraction, C over D, and you multiply that numerator and denominator by the other fraction's denominator. And as you can see, we have the same denominators because both BD is equal to DB. And we know this is true because of the commutative property. BD means B times D, and DB means D times B. And using the commutative property, I can just change the order of the appearance of those numbers without actually changing the value. All right, once we have that squared away, I think we can move into some adding of sub some subtraction of fractions. All right, the subtraction of fractions algorithm is similar to the one where we are adding, except we're not going to add the fractions, we're going to subtract them. So the algorithm goes A over B minus C over D equals AD, that's the multiplication of these two numbers by cross multiplying, minus, that's the minus sign right there, BC all over B times D. So in other words, we're multiplying the numerator of the first fraction and the denominator of the second fraction. Then we're subtracting that product from the denominator of the first fraction and the numerator of the second fraction's product. And we're putting that all over a denominator of both the product of the denominators, B and D. And then we also know that a over D minus B over C, minus BC, AD minus BC, I'm sorry, over BD is also equal to AD over BD minus BC over BD. And I've just written that for you right here. So you can see that there are two ways of representing this. The only reason why we put it over BD here is because we know that we're talking about the same unit. Remember that MK means M times K. So AD, in this case, means A times D. All right, now let's evaluate the algorithm at specific values of the variables. So we're going to know that A equals 3, so I'm going to put 3 there. B equals 4, so I'm going to put a 4 in the denominator of the first fraction. Subtract 5 ninths from that fraction as well. Now what it says is we're going to multiply 3 times 9, and that's going to give us 27, and we'll write that right there. Then we're going to subtract that product. Then we're going to subtract um, 4 times 5's product from 27, which is 20. And we're going to put that all over 4 times 9, which is 36. And when you do the subtraction, you'll get 7 36 Because you know you're talking about 36, that's the unit. But 27 minus 20 of those 36 is 7. I re rewrote this problem for you on the bottom just to see another way of looking at it. They mean the same exact thing. 
27 36 minus 20 36 equals 7 36. Now, what does this look like on the number line? Well, if we look at it, we're, we're starting at 0, and the problem is telling us that we're starting at 27 36, and we are taking away 30, 20 36. Okay? And what this basically means is that I start at 2736 and I take a whole segment of 2036 away. The answer is going to be the difference of 2736 minus 2036. And if you see that, that's 736 right here. Okay? So if I wanted to check this, see if it made sense, if I add 2036 plus 736, I get 2736, and that is correct. So that's just one way for you to check it out and to visualize it. When you subtract fractions, it means that you're taking, a, you're taking away a part of that length, and whatever is left over is actually the answer that you're going to get. So when you're reading word problems, it's helpful to think about... Um, Am I taking something out of this group to make sure that I get an answer? All right, let's move on to the next problem, and we're going to try this one together. All right, let's use the subtracting fractions algorithm, which states that we are going to do 9 times 3. And that's 27. We're going to subtract that from 10 times 1, which is 10. And we're going to put that all over the sequence of 10 times 3, which is 30th. So I have 30th, and when I have 27 minus 10 of those 30th, I end up with 17 30th left. And that's our answer. Just so happens that 17 30th is in simplest form as well. Okay. All right, now I'm going to ask you to try this one on your own, on a piece of paper, and once you've completed it, you can check to see if the answer is correct. I'm going to ask you to pause the video now and try this on your own. Okay, now it's time to check it out and see if you got the correct answer. The answer is 11 35ths, but the process in getting that answer is 3 times 7 is 21 minus 5 times 2 is 10 all over 5 times 7 is 35 and set that equal to in the sequence of 36 21 minus 10 is 11 and that's how we get the answer of 11 35ths